Let us read from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 21 and verse 34. Luke 21, 34. But take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, with drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that they come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell in the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be content, counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Let us also read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. And this is what matters, my dear brethren, whom we listen to. Whom do you hear? To whom do you pay attention to his words? And let me go a bit further. Who equips you? Who trains you? The Word of God tells us that he who has a trained ear, not here, but in here, not in his earthly ears, but in his heart, behold, I have placed in you ears of a trained man, so that you may hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Whom do you listen to? And the Holy Spirit speaks only through the Word of God. And the Word of God is preached only by the Holy Spirit. Or at least, it ought to be preached. So the question is, whom do you listen to? And now I want to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want to hear. The voice that is preached through the Word of God. And I want to read and examine and search the Word of God and that the Holy Spirit may speak to me through it. Then our course will be safe. Then our course will be blessed. Then we will save ourselves and also those who listen to us. We will edify ourselves and also those who hear us. For we all have the ones who listen to us. And if I want to listen to the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says, let everyone speak as if he speaks the oracles of God. I want others to hear the Holy Spirit as well, especially when I speak to them. And I also want to hear the Holy Spirit, especially when you speak to me. So within the church, let the Holy Spirit speak only. Through people who are weak, through people who are ill many times, who are full of flaws, who are problematic as well, because that is how we all come into the church. We must never forget that the church is a school, it is also a hospital. 
Christ did not come for the healthy. He came for the sick. And that is why we have to love the sick. Because the first and greatest sick man is us. I am the first and greatest ill person in here that needs someone to heal me. And you cannot do this. I may be harsh. I may be rough. I might have strange ideas. I may be proud. I need healing though. And this healing none of you can offer it to me. You have to be patient with me so that Christ may heal my soul. And we must be patient with everyone so that Christ may heal all of us. Only Christ heals the body, soul and spirit. Only Christ makes people healthy. Only by Christ do we expect correction. I cannot correct myself. How will I correct you? If you can't correct yourself, how will you correct me? But let us all go to Christ, my brethren, with acknowledgement that we all need correction. And let us pray to Him so that He may correct others as well. Of course, we must do this. This is a proof of love. But it shouldn't be us. And furthermore, to take a whip and begin to uh, scourge people and whip them so that we may correct them. We will just kill them. And we will have their responsibility and their blood on our shoulders. But, within this reality of the Church of Christ, because this is the Church of Christ, it is called, whom has it called? It is called the poor, the humble, the lame, the miserable, the lonely. And what does he say? Come to me, all you who labor, and I will give you rest. All you who don't have peace, and I will give it to you. Christ will heal us, my brothers and sisters. I remember once, someone came and told me this, Brother, People mustn't speak unknown tongues in the church. Other people are offended by this. And then I told them, Why are you telling me? Go tell this to the Lord. Am I here to give orders? Am I standing here? I'm standing here to do what? I just stand here to preach. Nothing more. Christ has made me, has have set me up to do nothing more. Once I tried to, to make a parrot of two young children, and after six months they broke up. And I went to the Lord, and the Lord, and I asked him, Lord, what happened? And the Lord spoke to me and said, I did not place you here to marry children off, to make pairs, to be a matchmaker. I placed you here to preach. This church isn't mine, my brothers and sisters. Neither is it ours. The church belongs to Christ. He is the teacher. He is the guide. He is the doctor. He is the head. I go to him as well and I ask for help. Let us all go to him. Prophecy, prophecies many times offend people. And why are you saying this to me? Go to the Lord. But I'll tell you one thing. The church that doesn't have gifts just fades in the end. It fades. So we must have tongues and we must have prophecies and interpretations, and we will all make mistakes, and then God will bless us. Amen? We'll make mistakes as well. And we want, because if I have 10 golden pounds in my pocket, if I had, and if someone told me, there's one uh, pound that is, that is fake, I don't know, I can't tell which the fake pound is. So what will I do? I'll hold on to it, I'll go to him who knows, and you'll take away the fake pound. I don't know how to tell the difference, so how will I do this? Once someone came and showed me a watch that was Omega, and I wanted to buy a watch for my wife. I said, yes. He said, yes. Is it good? He said, yes. How much does it cost? 
it was cheap. I said, my, my, so I went, I found some money, I bought it, I took it to my wife, and I said, look at this present I brought you. She looked at it, she looked back at me, she looked at it again, and then she began to laugh. She didn't swear at me, because I can't tell the difference between a fake and a real watch. I made a mistake. What does that mean, that I do not love her? If I had bought a fake watch on purpose to present it as a real one, of course, I was trying to deceive her. But that man tricked me. What can I do? May the Lord bless him. My brothers and sisters, we are not clever. We are not also wicked. You know what we are? We are sheep. We are kind in the heart. Can you deceive a lamb? Oh, it's very easy to trick a lamb. What's its defense? Only one. It runs to its shepherd. As long as it's next to its shepherd, it's not in danger. That is what I do as well. Let all the people in the world trick me, but I know that they cannot trick my shepherd, my pastor. I go and hide behind Jesus and say, Lord, my pastor, my king, what will he do? He'll say, here I am, my son. That is what a life of a Christian is. It is simple, but it is beautiful. When I first came into the church 27 years ago, I was cunning. I was clever. I thought that I knew everything. And I came in here and I saw sheep. And I said, ah, these are all fools. That's what I said. But then I said, Lord, make me like one of these fools here. Make me also a fool. And you know what? He made me a fool. Many times, sometimes the old former man comes out. But then the Word of God comes and says, Hey, don't go backwards, go forwards. And I correct myself. Isn't that what happens with you? Isn't this what happens with all of us? Isn't this what our life is like? Isn't this the, li the life that we want? And you know why we want this? Because the Lord is coming. And today, I want to pray. I want us to request something. But so we can have this request toward God, we must change our prayer. Usually we go to the Lord and say, Lord, please help me in this problem that I have, and that problem that I have, I can't do this. Protect me, have mercy upon me, and this is good. But I want us to go to the Lord and say, Lord, do you want me to help you? Lord, do you want me to do something for you? What do you think? Does he want you know, many times, he himself cannot go. He said, who will go for us? And his only begotten son, you know what he said? Behold, I, Lord God, with joy will do your will. I want us to change our prayer. Not to give up our first prayer, but to add another prayer. Lord, my God, what do you want from me? Well, one time, he wanted from Anavel Kana, he wanted... Forget about it. He wanted to find a person to make him a prophet so that he may anoint Saul and David. God cannot anoint them himself. He needed someone to anoint them by the gift of the by the leading of the Holy Spirit so that there won't be a mistake. And he needed a man that he would take into his hands, make him grow and teach him. Who would give him this man? Which woman can give him such a man? So he searched and searched and searched the world, and he found Anna of Cana, and he prayed. And she prayed in her sorrow and in, in her despair. For that reason, rejoice when you go through troubles. Paul says, I rejoice in my troubles. I boast in them. So he found a woman that was praying, and I want us to make this prayer as well. If you give me a child, I will give it back to you. And he said, that is what I was looking for. God is looking for something from you. Not your heart only. Neither your life only. But your ability. Because our sufficiency is from the Lord. He is giving you some ability. He wants you to give him something, but we do not know what it is. Neither Anavel Kana knew this, but in her sorrow she understood it. 
And after she gave birth to her son, they had more children after that. She was barren. No, she wasn't barren. God had shut up her womb. And when she fed it, either it's three years old, five years old, doesn't matter. She gave it to the Lord. To whom did she give it? Did she give it to God? She gave him to Eli. Eli. But she knew that she was giving her child to God. And then Samuel came from that. And Samuel anointed Saul as king, but, Sam, but Saul didn't do a good job. And so God then told him, now you go and anoint one of the sons of Jesse. So he went and found the first, the oldest son, he said, this is it. No, but he was a prophet. And the Holy Spirit told him, no. Did he speak to him in this ear? Not that ear, but the one inside. This isn't my anointed one, he said. Because Samuel was a prophet. He was a man of God. His mother had dedicated him to the Lord. And so he reached the seventh, David, and he said, this is him. And once in the church of Antioch, Antioch, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate unto me two people so that they may do this work that I have planned for them. Are you giving them? Can you give them to me? I want Barnabas and Paul. And so when the brothers prayed on them, they sent them off. Here, Lord, take them. They're yours. And we as well, my brothers and sisters. What do you want from me, Jesus? What do you want me to give to you? But when we will say this, may it be that God will have prepared enough heart. If he tells us to sell our possessions like that young rich man, let us be ready to do it. He won't tell us this. Don't worry. He will ask for other things. But the things they will ask for us to do, let us do them. Let us do them. And when we change our prayer, then the Lord will come and say to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, I know your works. But you also must know that I am the Holy One. I am the true one. Who is the Holy One? Who is the true? Christ is the true but also something more. Who has the key of David that opens and no one can shut? It's not in your hand, not in my hand, not in any of ours. Do we have such a key that opens and no one can shut or that we shut and no one is able to open it? Christ alone has this key. And this door here. Only Christ can open it and bring His people in. And only Christ can shut it and no one is left inside. But I have set before you. Hmm. Do you want the Lord to set before you an open door? A door of blessing? Do you want this? You know whom do you, he speaks to? He's speaking to the angel of the church in his loneliness. He doesn't say this before all men. No one knows what he's telling him. Later on, the Holy Spirit records it through John the prophet the disciple of the Lord. This is a personal negotiation. Do you want Christ to have a personal negotiation with you? In your loneliness, you will find this thing. For that reason, make sure that you have some time alone with the Lord, but also that other people have time alone with the Lord. You know what I call the women? Um, they're fools sometimes. Young women, they come here, we, we lay a... a husband on their shoulders that runs in the word of God also we they have two or three children and then we tell them now walk how can that woman walk I really love our sisters have compassion on them of course when I was working I didn't understand what my wife was going through now that I'm that I'm a pensioner I know what my wife went through it's a struggle it's a race Give her some time so she can go and take some strength, receive some power. Give her the chance so that God may open a door for her. And no one is able to shut what God opens. And why did he pick him of all the churches? There is a reason. For he has small strength. You know what small strength means? He has acknowledged that he has small strength. Who of us can say, I have strength, I am strong? It will just be foolishness. 
Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we can do nothing at all. You know what our weakness is? It's, uh, our strength is. It's, it's zero. We are all in perfect weakness. We cannot help ourselves and correct ourselves. No other man. Who can keep his children in this world that is riled and rough? Who can defend himself or his brothers? You have small strength and you know it. Because you may have small strength and not know it, like the church of La like the angel in the church of Laodicea. I am wealthy, I am rich, I am not in no need of anyone. But you haven't understood that you are wretched and miserable and poor, that you have very small strength. So today, my brothers and sisters, let us all understand that we have small strength. You know who has the smallest strength of all of us? Christ. He cannot do a lot of things with you unless you confess your own weakness. I was thinking and, and trying to think. I said, Lord, you are almighty. Can't you save all these people? And God told me, I have little strength. And I was afraid then. You know when the power of the Lord becomes perfect? When our weaknesses come together. That is when He becomes mighty. When is Christ mighty? When I am weak. When I am strong, then Christ is weak. We only see what the Word of God says. When I am weak, then I am strong. And my weakness, the power of the Lord, is made perfect. And my strength, what is proved by that? The, the power of the Lord is appear, appears to be zero. So you want to be strong or do you want Christ to be strong? This is a serious question, a question of life. We say that Christ is the Lord of hosts, and He is. But for men, He becomes weak. He cannot save unless man approaches Him. He cannot convince. And in His weakness, He calls out to you. But not you who are strong, because He cannot do anything. You who are weak. I want us all to confess today that we have small strength, Lord. My brethren, do we have small strength? Whoever feels that he is weak, let him lift his hand up because we want, the, we want Christ to appear mighty among us. I am weak. Say it, brother. I am weak. I am weak. I have very small strength. I am wretched. I am vile. Then... The smallest power and strength that you have, the more will the power of God appear perfect in your life. And this isn't in words. These are words of understanding, of acknowledgement. I know how weak I am, how, how I can get angry very often. My wife tells me, your eyes are so angry now. I'm weak. This happens to me. My heart just gets troubled and, and I lose my peace. I'm jealous sometimes. All these things, all the weaknesses of the world are upon me. But do not think that it is only I who have this. We are all in this state. And I'd say it's only us, only me, but it's not in your interest. This is not so I can insult you. Do not think that you're someone great and without you nothing can be done. Because truly, if you are great, then with you nothing can be done. What are you, my brother? You're weak. You have very little strength. But, but you have made a decision to keep the Word of God. We do not want to go astray from the healthy doctrine of the Lord. We've made this decision and that's it. It's final. What, are we perfect and, uh, and, and the best scholars in the Scripture? No, no, no. Not a chance of it. Are we all teachers and professors and guides of the Word of God? No. What are we? We are disciples, students of the first grade. One is our teacher, Jesus Christ. One is our guide and professor, Jesus Christ. We are just disciples. And if you want something more, we are also weak. And if you want something more, we are soldiers that are newcomers, new recruits. There are soldiers that have 
them eyesight, they can't see well. They're in the army, they don't know where to do, where to go. That's what we are. My brother and my sister, this is who you are. This is what you are. This is what I am. A disciple that is ill and a new, a newcomer. But we have a very good guide, a very good teacher, a marvelous doctor, and a king of kings, the Lord of lords who trains us. And that is what the Church of Christ is. And we thank God very much for the Church of Christ. In this Church of Christ, God places an open door that no one can shut. And He makes everyone who are enemies and say that they are Jews, but they are not. Through this door, He will bring them all to worship before the name of the Lord, as He did with me and as He did with you. Let us all worship Christ. But, because you've kept my word to persevere, and you have not said in your heart, the Lord is delaying. He didn't say this. The Lord is delaying. Because if you say that the Lord is delaying, then you'll look around to see whom you want to beat up. Who's not sitting well, let me punish him. And you will be a man that will puff up his chest and say, it is I. No, my brethren. Here is Christ and Christ alone. But because you've kept my word to persevere, and you have never said in your heart, the Lord is the lane, but the fear of the Lord reigns in you, for that reason I will keep you from the time of temptation. He will try the whole world in this time of temptation is the trumpet of the Lord, is the rapture of the church. How much would I like the Lord to show me, and He will never do this, how many of us will go and how many of us will be left behind. I'm very afraid of God. And I say, Lord, just let me be in those who will go up, who will leave with you. And you know where my confidence lays? In finding grace in the eyes of God. And I will find grace in the eyes of God when I know that I have small strength. I cannot do a lot of things on my own. I can't do anything at all. I am small and significant and vile. But, in that way, I will find grace in the eyes of the Lord, always. But, there is a great danger. Be careful of yourselves, is what we read. And not others. That's a big mistake. Take heed to yourselves. Gospel according to Luke 21.34 Take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down and they leave, lose their cleanness. Their hearts lose their sanctification. Lest your heart grow weary. And furthermore, this to happen with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life. Carousing drunkenness and pleasures of this life bring weight to the hearts of men. They weigh it down, but also the cares of this life weigh it down. So for that reason, do not ask for a lot of things. People say, and it's well that they say it, as much as you can step, just go forward. Don't make great, marvelous plans for yourself. You'll find yourself in a dead end. But have humble plans. Plans that we can easily begin and easily con end. When the Word of God, when Christ says, Do you want to build something? Measure and see if you have what is necessary. If you don't have what is necessary, stop. Because you won't end it and they will mock you. When you go to war and the enemy is coming with greater powers than you, count your, your, your army. Can you face him? Otherwise, go and make a covenant with him. And the Word of God tells us that we cannot do anything at all. Do not start war. Do not wage war. Do not prepare to build something. And I'm talking about the house. It's good that you're building a house for yourself. But if you build a church, a work of God, something, don't think that it's easy. Don't let your heart deceive you. 
Christ is the one who does everything. Christ. And when Christ does this, then the steadfast foundation remains having this seal. And may this seal be the end of our word today. The Lord knows those who are his own. Judge not, for you shall be judged. If he is of the Lord, only Christ knows it. If I am of the Lord, only Christ knows this. Do not condemn me. Do not judge me. Do not condemn. Do not judge the church. Do not think of thoughts that are against the church. But let us always think of thoughts that are in favor of our brothers and sisters. Because when we think of, of things that are against our brothers and sisters, our heart gets weighed down and we'll lose the rapture. The wicked and evil servant fights. He beats his fellow servants. And he will lose the rapture. He's not going well. But the humble one that is meek and safe and secure, he will earn the rapture of the church. And there is a word that we have to pay attention to. Keep watch praying at all times so that you may be counted worthy to escape all the things that will come to pass, that you will be counted worthy. We have to be worthy in the church, not before men, but before God. There are people, there will be people who won't love you. So what? Doesn't matter. There are people who don't love me. What can I do? I'll just pray for them and nothing more. What can I do? They just don't love me. What will they do? Somersaults for them so they can love me? They just won't love me. I must pray so that the Lord will make them love me for their salvation. So the most important thing isn't if they do not love me. The most important thing is if I do not love them. If there are people, enemies maybe, that I do not love, then I'm not going well. There is a danger. There is fear. And I must repent quickly. My dear brothers and sisters, if there are people, listen to me carefully, my sister. Listen to the word of God carefully, my brother. If there are people or a man that you do not love a lot, then you have no life within you. And if by chance there is a man that you dislike, then God sees you as if you're a murderer. People don't love you, doesn't matter. The Lord will take care of them. May the Lord bless them. Do you love them? That is what matters. Do you love Him? We cannot play with the salvation of our soul. We mustn't. We mustn't. So today let us hear the end of the story. Love one another fervently from a clean heart, not a burdened heart. From a clear conscience in a good work, not a work of darkness. And with faith with, that is without hypocrisy, with trust in God. And then God will bless us. My brother, do you want to go to heaven? My brother, my sister, do you want to go to heaven? I really want this. I do not want to lose the heavens. Then let us return to God. Let us ask for mercy and grace from God. And then God will bless us. Amen? Amen, Lord Jesus.